Hello everyone, welcome to this new challenge. We're going to hack a target just like we do in a pen test. Let's get started. The target is called basic pen testing. It's hosted on RootMe and it's a boot to root machine, which means that we only have access to the machine remotely and we need to get root. In other words, full control over the server hosting that application. We don't know yet if it, there is a web application or not. I'm just going to test on the browser. And yes, we have a web application saying it works. This is a default Apache 2 web page. But before we do anything further, we need to start by doing port scanning. This is to make sure that we cover the attack surface and we don't just focus on rabbit holes. So I'm going to target the top 100 ports and run it against CTF02, which is the room I'm running in on RootMe. Make sure to check that out on rootme.org. It's a great feature. It allows you to play with a bunch of machines. Just go and give it a try. All right, it was quick, and that's because we've used the top 100 ports, and we've already got a whole lot of ports. Um, we have FTP, SSH, um, domain, HTTP. This is the port that we've found uh, here in the web browser. And we have a bunch of uh, others. So we have a SIP that's probably hosting voice over IP server. Um, and we have 8008. I wonder what these um, services are. So I'm just going to run the same command, but with dash s capital V to, you know, grab the banner and see what are the versions running for each service. And hopefully this wouldn't take long. Right after that, we can extend to other ports and uh, focus on the ones that we've had so far. During a penetration test, it's always a good idea to optimize your workflow so that you give the best value to your clients. It's also very important to take into consideration the scope. I mean, if the scope was just the web application hosted in port 80, then you don't have the right to test other ports. But let's say that you stumbled upon this uh, web application or this IP address behind the web application um, during an external pen test engagement. In this case, yes, you do your port scanning like just like what we're doing here to try to find your way into the infrastructure of your client. So it seems that it's taking a bit. I just hit enter on my keyboard to see the progress and it seems that it's about to finish we still have like 10 seconds to go while it's running i'm just going to go here and try to fetch the robots.txt a famous file that can host interesting entries but in this case we don't have that file okay we have some output and for ftp we have pro ftpd version 1.3 um, for SSH, we have this version right here. Now the domain says here it's closed. I'm not sure if we had it open before. Nope. Yep, it was closed. Um, so we don't care about it. Uh, we have Apache, as we've guessed from the default web page that we've had in the welcome page. Nmap tried to interact with port 8008, and it seems that it couldn't fingerprint it. So, but we can see here that we have a bunch of HTTP keywords like redirection to um, something on port 8015. So it seems like this might be also a web page. So let's use our web browser and we accept the certificate, no problem. Oh yeah, it's redirecting to 8015 as we've guessed it from the nmap output. If we go to HTTP directly, we land on 40 gate intrusion prevention, access blocked, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I just realized that I was running my scans through a VPN, which gave us false output. So we need to rerun our commands. Okay, now we're getting something. Um, we use tools like nmap to uh, help us in our process and speed it uh, speed it up. But uh, if it doesn't work, then uh, we can use Netcat and grab the banners ourselves. But I think it's now working correctly. Okay, perfect. All right, so we have three ports, uh, FTP, running pro FTPD, as we saw earlier, uh, SSH and AT. We don't have the 
SIP or other ports. It w they were just false positives. All right, since we don't have anything on uh, port 80, like an interesting web page, uh, we have two options. Uh, either go to another service like FTP in this case, or try to brute force directories. So I'm going to first try while we are at port 80, try to discover more about this web service. If we don't find anything, then we can go back to port FTP. So I'm going to use WFuzz and in this case, I'm just going to start small with the quick hits file and it would be CTF02. I just pulled this command from my history and yeah. We have so far the same ports that we've had before. Let's see if Nmap finds anything new. It's halfway through. Let's go back to WFuzz and see if we have any interesting entries. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of 404s that are filtered out because we've used the dash dash HC for um, hide code and we find a directory here which is redirecting and that's uh, because we see the response code 301 so that's promising let's go to that directory and see if we find something interesting oh okay from the title I can see already my secret blog just another WordPress site hmm but why is it like shown like that? I suspect that's because uh, we have a lot of missing files, CSS and JavaScript files, I guess. Let's go to network and refresh the page and verify if our hypothesis is correct. Yep, so as you can see, we have styles which are broken. What is the URL used for those? If we check, if we click on one of them, um, we go to headers. Oh, we see that it they are fetching it from HTTP column slash slash VTC sec. Hmm. So this is the host name that we need to edit in our ATC hosts file. So we would have the uh, correct uh, appearance of the page. All right, let's dig ctf02 dot root me dot org. So let's take this IP address instead of the host name and put it right here. Save and refresh. And yes, we get the correct appearance of the website. So now we recognize the default 20 something theme on WordPress. We also have a login page here, which points to the admin dashboard. We usually test for default credentials. So we can say, what are the default credentials for WordPress? And Google happily answers our question with admin. So let's try that out. So admin password, put something random, and we get an error saying the password you entered for the username admin is incorrect, which means that admin is indeed a correct username. If let's say we have a random username and dummy password we get a different response invalid username so this is a known uh, behavior of WordPress so why don't we try like one two three four nope it's not working um, what about uh, admin oh all right so gain access as admin using just the dummy password admin same as the username uh, we could have uh, tried something else, but it seems that I was lucky th today. Generally, I'm not that lucky. And as you can see, um, even Chrome says, hey, you need to change that password. That's hilarious. So we've gained access to the admin dashboard as an admin user. Now, we could have also guessed it using a brute force attempt. And I let this as an exercise to you guys. The way to do it is using Hydra uh, or WP Scan. Those are the two tools that you can use. Uh, so feel free to try that on your own. If you find any problems, then just uh, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer your questions. In the next video, we're going to dig deeper and see if we can gain remote code execution using the access that we've gained so far.
If you learned something new in this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the ring bell to receive the video, the next video, once it goes live. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.